Bumi Bumi Adenero videos. We really appreciate you joining us day after day, week after week, helping us to grow and you growing as well. Today I have an interesting topic and my topic is Christian growth. How do we go grow as a Christian? What does it mean to grow as a Christian? Can we grow in this day and age? Do we need mentors and leaders to grow? What are the better ways to grow? I wanted to read a Bible verse in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. But I'm going to I'm going to start from verse 2 and then go back to verse 1. Like newborn babies, I'm using the BSB Berean Study Bible. I don't know why I picked that one. I just like the way he wrote it. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good like newborn babies you know i i've had children before thank god and i realized when i started having children children love breast milk it doesn't mean they're gonna i know there are some children that don't like breast milk and usually what we see in that case is they've started with the bottle so the bottle is quick and you put it in their mouth and they are finished, they are full, they are satisfied and then mommy comes with breast. And you know breast is slow motion in most cases because it's supposed to be for bonding. You are holding the baby, you are beholding your child, you are looking at the face and the baby is looking at you and they are sucking. But for some babies that's too slow. But let's talk about babies, natural, most babies, they love breast milk. This Bible first say, desire the sincere milk, <clears throat> like newborn babies. What is it to desire sincere milk as a Christian? Sincere milk as a Christian is the word of God. The preaching, the sermon, the worship, they are all encompassed in the word of God. Believe me, you cannot just be praying 24 hours and you don't study, you don't worship, you don't go in the presence of God. You're not going to grow. What does it mean to grow? To grow is to develop. I had a sermon today. I'm trying to remember. I had a couple of sermons today, but I'm trying to remember who preached it out of my two favorite preachers that I listen to mostly on daily basis. And I believe one of the one that I remember said, when you just become a believer, because you are emotionally attached to God, Oh, I think it's Pastor Kingsley that said that. Because you are emotionally attached to God, everything just excites you. Everything about God excites you. They say, let's go to church. We are on fire. Ah, we are going to church. We have Bible study today. Tomorrow, we have prayer meeting. The next day, power conference. The third day, Shiloh hour. The fourth day, the Holy Ghost. You are going to everything. And all of a sudden, six months, one year down the line, the emotion has died. Not that you are no more a Christian, you are still a Christian. But the energy and the emotion begins to dwindle. Why? Because then you get preoccupied. Because you came into it with emotion and feelings. And that is when you need to know that I need to grow because as you begin to grow, you are no more acting out your Christian life based on your emotion. 
you are acting out your Christian life based on discernment. You are acting out your Christian life based on the Word of God. You are acting out your Christian life based on your forefathers that have been Christians and have gone ahead of you. You have seen their failures. You have seen their success. That is now what you are learning from, not the emotion of, wow, I gave my life to Christ. But let me go back to that Bible verse. How do you go? Then verse 1 says, Read yourself therefore of all malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. That's a lot of things. Malice, hypocrisy, envy, deceit, and slander. Those five things will hinder a Christian growth. When you are envious, you will not grow. When you are filled with malice, you will not grow. When you slander people, you will not grow. When you envy people, you will not grow. When you are hypocritical and you are deceitful, you will not grow. How can you be hypocritical as a Christian? You see that sister coming up? You don't like that sister for whatever reason, I don't know. We're supposed to love everybody, but we may not like everybody as a true Christian. But, you know, you don't like that sister for whatever reason, and she comes to you, Hi, oh, Sister Joyce, God bless you. How are you? We miss you in church yesterday. You know, all right, that you're lying because you don't miss her. Because you are even happy she didn't come. That means you are hypocritical. You are not faith in it. Don't do that African Christian thing. Oh, just faith in it. No, you are not faith in it. It's better you just keep quiet. Don't say anything than to lie and be deceitful. Another way you can be deceitful and be hypocritical is when something is going on in maybe your church or your community or your ministry that you belong to and you don't like what is going on but instead of you to say i don't like it you go to sister b sister y sister q and talk about it but leave the party involved and never say anything about it if you do that, you're not going to grow. But because I'm talking to my youth most of the time, I know my youth are very perfect. They don't do stuff like that. So how do we grow, right? My youth are excellent. They don't, they don't gossip. They don't envy at all. There's no remote chance that the youth will do that. But let's assume there are some youths that do that. How do we grow? We grow by giving time to God. I know a lot of churches preach by service. Yes, you do need to give service to God. You do need to participate in church activities. But church activities is not a sign of growth. I'm sorry, I go to church. I am a Christian. But going to church seven days a week is not a sign that you are growing as a Christian. Because by the time you go to church seven days a week, you come back home, you don't pray, you come back home, you don't study the word, you come back home, you don't go back and play Pastor So So So's video that he used to minister to you, and then you go back to church the next day, and then you go back to church the next day. Eventually, you'll be burnt out. So let's separate church activities from growth. It is important to go to church because the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of believers. And I believe that perfectly because it's the word of God. But don't do so much activities in your church. Church can have activities because if you don't go today, somebody will go. So I don't blame churches with a lot of activities. I love it because if I can't come today, there may be somebody that could not come yesterday that will come today. So activities is okay, but as an individual, activities is not what determines whether you are a Christian 
or not your relationship the ability to hear god the ability to communicate with god is what determines whether you are a christian or not can we still have christian values in this day and age of course actually this day and age as bad as this day and ages this is when you can demonstrate that you are a christian because everything turmoiling around you, everything falling apart around you, you are standing firm on the anchor of Jesus Christ. Let people see you and know you are a believer. Let your actions show you are a believer. Not your dressing. I didn't say don't wear a ring. I didn't say don't put on makeup. Those are not what makes you a believer. I didn't say don't wear pants. Those are not what makes you a believer. Those are mostly cultural based Christianity. And one day I'm going to be talking about that. Because when you come to America and you live in a state like New York, I don't care how Christian you are, you're going to wear pants eventually because you're going to freeze. So not wearing pants does not make you a Christian. Wearing pants does not make you not be a Christian. This is the time you can showcase Christ. This is the time you see so much immorality, but you stand pure. And then people say, how could you be so positive? Somebody asked me one day at my workplace, with everything, you all, I wish I can stay positive like you. And I said, the only reason I can stay positive is because I'm under grace. It doesn't matter what is cracking down, I'm secured. And I was able to talk to that person about Christ. That is how you know whether you are a Christian or not. How do we identify good mentors? Your pastor, your leader, your mentor should be interested in your growth. I remember maybe 24 years ago, credit to my mentor then. I'm going to mention his name. He probably doesn't even, I don't know if he looks at my video or not, but I'll send this one to him. Credit to Pastor Tsunji Oshinulu. I remember we were supposed to learn Galatians 2.20 oh! and that is how I knew he was going to be a good mentor to my life. I'm not, uh, I don't see him as often as I used to but he has impacted my growth a lot. Pastor Tundi Oshinulu, he made sure I know that verse. He made sure I understand what that verse means. He made sure I was able to apply that verse. He didn't beat me. He didn't scold me. He would just say, okay, you are up to three quarters. So by next week, you should be up to three over seven. But he stayed on me to know it. He gave me spiritual assignment. That is one of the ways to know mentor. Another way to know a mentor, look at the life of your mentor. Is it a facade or a real life? Is your mentor real? Not that you say, oh, that's my pastor, and then tomorrow you see your pastor with a babe, and you say, nobody, there is nobody perfect. Everybody can sin. Of course, everybody sin. But is he a good mentor to you? The other way to pick a spiritual mentor is by praying. God knows your weakness. God knows what you really need. He will connect you to the right person if you ask him. We not every time we need to ask God for a car, a house, a money, and everything. We can ask God for spiritual growth. Lord, I want to grow. Lead me to the ministry that will help me grow. Lead me to the ministry that I will be a blessing. Lead me to the ministry that will edify me. Lead me to the ministry that I can help people. Right now. I am Bumi Adenino. We are looking for mentors everywhere to help us mentor our young girls. That is an opportunity to help you grow. If you're already a Christian and you're doing the things of God, you can inbox us. We need mentors to mentor young children, actually, between the ages of 8 and 17, I believe. We've been looking, but each time we see a mentor, they are either interested in how much are you going to pay us, or what are we gonna do oh i don't have time to be sitting down and talking to one some small girls or whatever you can be a mentor you can join our team and help us in mentoring young girls 
as well as you be mentored by our leaders because we all we have leaders both male and female the ways you can better grow is to live in love the bible says god is love make sure you love everybody i think two years ago my pastor's wife under her email the only thing she put there is oh no but oh anybody nothing but love you know that that bible verse and every time she sends you an email you read it i think an email or a text you read it and i'm like the only thing you can owe is love so in order for you to grow as a christian love exhibit love let the grace that the lord extend to you be extended to other people learn to forgive you know when you read our lord's prayer lord forgive us as we forgive others do we truly forgive others or we want god to forgive us and we don't forgive so live in love learn to forgive refrain from envy jealousy malice hypocrisy and all sorts stay away from sexual immorality spend time in the presence of god spend time don't copy anybody don't say oh my church members they spend seven hours in the presence of god what if you don't have seven hours or within your seven hours your mind have traveled 500 times if you're gonna spend 30 minutes make it a quality 30 minutes talk to your father lay down what you want your father to help you with and god is forever faithful if you cry to him for christian growth to grow and to be able to be a blessing he will be a blessing to you he will answer your prayer so if you like to be our mentors please reach out we are looking for godly mentors that will help us mentors mentor our young children thank you very much for joining us God bless you. I'll see you soon.